My name is Julie Pearson Little Thunder um, with the Oral Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at Oklahoma State University. And I'm interviewing Mitchell Cypress for the Shilako Alumni Association here at Shilako Indian Agricultural School outside of Newkirk, Oklahoma. Um, Mitchell, you served in the Army. Uh, you left as a Specialist 5 and you attended Shilako here. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Where were you born and where did you grow up? I was born in Miami, Florida. Uh, I grew up uh, on a reservation called Big Cypress, Florida. And that's where I went to school till ninth grade. Then I transferred to Salaco and finished in 66. Mm. What did your folks do for a living? Well, my mother was a single parent. She was more or less like a, a you would say, a, mm, a homemaker. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, brothers or sisters? Yes, I have. Uh, there were nine of us, and there's five of us left, and four of them passed on. Mm -hmm. Where were you in the lineup? Were you? I was the third one. Okay. Third one. Yes, third <laughs> oldest. Um, so, what was your exposure to Seminole language and culture growing up, or Mikosukia? Uh, well, I'll, I'll, back then we still have uh, our grandparents, so most of the time that we would be uh, living with our grandparents, so that's mm -hmm. where some of the teaching were uh, brought to us, and culture was tradition. And you mentioned you ended up coming to school at Shalako fairly young. Um, did you have any other family over here? No. I didn't know anybody when I got here. I just wanted to get out of that. We're, we're a kind of isolated uh, mm -hmm. area, so by the time you get on the bus, 6 o'clock in the morning, by the time you get home in the wintertime, it's dark. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of rough. So he'd been here. And, Boarding school, they give you a, you know a place to stay and three meals a day, and mm -hmm. you can play sports or whatever. They make friends, so that kind of interested me, and I want to get out and explore. I guess you would say. <laughs> what were your first um, impressions when you arrived? Well, you know. Uh, Did you come by bus? Yes, we came on a bus and took us. I don't know. Day there were some other people from Big Cypress. Yes. There were like six or seven of us, and then there was others from different reservations. So we had, uh, back then they had the trail we were running, so chartered it. So it had a bus full. Some <laughs> were going to Sequoia, and majority of them came over here. Uh -huh. What was one of the hardest adjustments you had to make? Well, uh, the hardest one I had to adjust is probably uh, get used to being away from your family, especially your mother, she was a single parent. Mm -hmm. So, but it didn't take too long. Got to know everybody and uh, a place, a decent place to live, so I kind of <laughs> work and blend with the rest of them. Yeah. What was one of the easiest things to get used to? Easiest thing to get used to is probably uh, a good meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You didn't mind the chow. <laughs> no, no. Uh, um, did you did you write your mom then? Yes, maybe uh, once once a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know that uh, she's probably uh, she never went to school. And I uh, had to uh, get somebody to uh, look at the letter or mm -hmm. get asked somebody to write a letter. So uh, I think I usually get like $15 a month because she, she was on a uh, monthly check. Uh -huh. So that kind of, back then, was a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Were you able to go home in the summer? Yes. Uh, first year. 63 to 64 went home in 64 to 65. I stayed here for summer and worked a little bit and then uh, helped uh, 
uh, some of the uh, work around here mm -hmm. until around July or maybe first week of August. Went home and then come back mm -hmm. the senior year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you uh, did you enlist in the army? Is that uh, I was uh, with National Guard here. National the, Guard, yeah. yeah. And then I joined the National Guard, and then when I got out, uh, graduated the sentence of summer camp. And then I went home, and then uh, the draft board uh, sent me a, the draft notice, so then I went on to finish up that two years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what did you, uh, when you were here, what did you kind of focus on in your classes? What was your focus? Well, that's what I was telling uh, my friend Clarence. I said, you know, when I think back, I don't remember bringing homework or, or <laughs> in fact, the only thing I remember is running around on campus, but uh, they must have uh, focused. I, I mostly uh, always like the history. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was probably focusing on. And you played sports here? What did you uh, do in sports? I was too small, maybe not eight, <laughs> but I did play uh, intramural uh, softball or mm -hmm. baseball. I mean uh, basketball. That's about it. And uh, never got a chance to uh, play uh, the sports here because mm -hmm. uh, they have a uh, uh, bigger guy than you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was soaking wet foot and about 90, 95 pounds. So. <laughs> I tried, but they were bigger guys, more experienced. So when you got your draft notification, where were you at the time when you got it? Uh, I was at home. Mm -hmm. in my uh, reservation, Big Cypress. Mm -hmm. And where did you have to report to? Uh, we, I got on the bus at my hometown, Cluston, and then uh, traveled to Carl Gable, Florida, by Miami. Mm -hmm. And then we got processed, and then we transferred to South Carolina, I think that's what it was. South Carolina? Yeah. Fort Bragg or? Uh, no, uh, the other one, uh, man, what was it, Fort, uh, that was Fort Bragg, man, it slipped my mind. We can add it in okay. when we remember, when okay. it comes back. Um, what was your, um, what was it like being in boot camp? Well, boot camp is something that uh, I would say was interesting because it built you up and teach you leadership. Plus, uh, it helped me out being in boarding school because you have to get up and you have to make your bed and clean the floor, trash can and everything. So I had my teaching in the boarding school. So when I went to military, it just kicked in. I knew uh -huh. what I had to do. So it helped me a lot. And that's where mostly uh, uh, the learning is coming from the boarding school. So I did all right in uh, boot camp. Had you ever been to South Carolina before? Mm, no. Uh -huh. When you went off base, what was that like? Uh, off base where I was stationed. Mm -hmm. or, or during boot camp, were you allowed to go off base? Oh, Maybe you during weren't. boot camp, uh, I went to uh, Fort Leonard, Missouri. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's when I was That's where you guard. did your boot yeah. camp at, mm -hmm. at Fort Yeah. Leonard, Missouri. And then uh, AIT was uh, Fort McClellan, Alabama. Fort McClellan, yeah. Alabama. So when I got drafted, oh, okay. I didn't have to go through the boot camp or AIT. That's right, because yeah. you'd already done yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, so once you went to South Carolina, who were some of the instructors you trained under that you Which, remember? Uh, I stayed there for about three weeks and I already had my boot camp so they were waiting to repla uh, replacement into another post so I stayed there for three weeks and then transferred into Fort Dix okay. in New Jersey mm -hmm. and I stayed there until uh, I got there July or June and then I left Germany in December. Left for Germany. And no, what year was it? That was 69. And 69. Mm -hmm. um, 
What were your impressions of Germany when you got there? Well, I have to adapt to weather. But in springtime, in summertime, it's the best place to be, but not in wintertime. <laughs> so I had to get used to it. The, the cold? Yeah, but in uh, wintertime, I, uh, I looked out and I was attached to uh, first and 64th armor, so I was inside a tank. So majority of the time, so there was there was a thought there was a good replacement that they put me there. Mm -hmm. And did you kind of have a background in, in heavy equipment or mm -hmm. mechanics or no no? I wonder how they chose you for. Uh, what happened was that they were drafting to go to Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam. A lot right. of troops went there, so they were uh, short on. Uh, uh, replacement plus at that year in that summer 60 or maybe 80 when Czechoslovakia got invaded by a Russian overnight so they call it Levy came down and uh, they call us call our names out that that's going to be going to Germany Frankfurt Germany to be replaced over there in the border so okay. that's where we were shipped out to there. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Did it seem like there was going to be? What were your impressions of the the politics? Did it seem like there was going to be trouble, and you guys needed to be ready? Or yeah, they call it the alert, so you had to get ready on time and get in your tanks, and you got to move out of there, mm -hmm. and where they want you to be placed at in a certain area. Mm -hmm. So we had to practice and, and um, more than like a training as well. But you got teach they teach you as being alert in the time there's a real real one, mm -hmm. then you be prepared. Yes. Um, what what were your impressions of Germany when you were able to go off base? Uh, I learned a lot of things the way uh, their culture as well as how how they uh, uh, treat the Americans and. Uh, and some areas, they uh, they welcome you in some areas, I guess, close to a military base. Military Americans already got other people mad already, <laughs> so you, you're in there already, <laughs> and you're part of a group. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, as a Native American, did you get a different kind of reception? <clears throat> from some well, we was talking about it uh, a while ago, and some one of the guys had the same treatment. And back then, uh, they said uh, American Indians, they didn't say Native American. Today they do, but back then, uh, they said American Indian. They said, they asked me what nationality I am. I told them American Indian. They said, no, you're not. You look like a Hawaiian or a <laughs> Filipino. <laughs> well, I'm a Native, not Native, uh, American Indian. <laughs> Whatever you want to call me, go ahead. <laughs> They said they don't draft Indians. Indians don't have to go to uh, military. I said this Indian got drafted. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> A lot of misinformation. <laughs> um, what is the what was the best thing about being in Germany? Well, as far as uh, being over there. The best thing I thought was, other than training, is sightseeing, seeing the old castles mm -hmm. that you know you never really uh, thought that it exists until you were over there, and, and, and just like you see in the movie, when there, there must have been, uh, uh, I don't know how to build it, but it's huge. Uh -huh. yeah. What was the worst thing about being in Germany? Weather. <laughs> Other than that, um, I, I handled it pretty good. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. um, what happened after you came back home? Well, after I came back home, I had to adapt uh, the society, you would say, I guess. And but then it's it's kind of a little different. And I kind of thought about going back in there. Back into the military? Yeah, back into the military. Mm -hmm. But then some of my friends came over a week later and I wandered around with them and then 
I lost my uh, interest going back. Mm -hmm. So then I just stayed just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and you were back in Florida? Yes, uh -huh. back I went back success. in Florida. Uh -huh. yeah. um, what kinds of uh, jobs or did you take up when you were there? Well, uh, first I have to uh, see what my future was. Mm -hmm. After I come back from military, because uh, I got to adjust to the society, and then uh, some of the uh, my friends, and my relatives, come returning from military, got jobs in uh, tribal uh, uh, Seminole tribe, mm -hmm. and then I start working with uh, one elderly guy. He operates uh, heavy equipment, so he hired me, and then. Uh, as the years pass, he become a president of the tribe, and then uh, I was working with a health department. Then he wanted me to move up to another uh, program uh, under uh, land development. So he put me there, and then he coached me on uh, politics, and he took me to uh, Washington. He said that one day you're going to come up here and ask him for some money for your tribe, so this is what you need to do. And sure enough, <laughs> it was, it was, I had to do it. And um, I got into politics in 1979 wow. as a local representative. And all the way up to 75, no, for the 95. Tribe. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the tribe, Seminole Tribe of Florida. In 95, then uh, I was elected a president and then to a chairman. And mm. then President for eight years and uh, chairman for eight years, and then I got beat out, laid out four years, and then I got back in today, uh, the, uh, this past uh, May. Oh, well, congratulations. Yes. Yeah. Well, how did your schooling at Shalako help you with um, tribal government? Well, it, I must have learned something because uh, some of the, the things that I was taught in school kind of helped me out, plus. Uh, I was working along with some of politicians on the local reservation mm -hmm. where I was at, so I tried to catch all the tricks, you would say, <laughs> in politics. So as I got elected in 79, I have to really learn how to, uh, to uh, work with uh, other uh, politicians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. When you were at Shalako, do you remember any uh, instructors that stood out for you? Yes, uh, I remember uh, Mr. Uh, Nunn. He used to be our agriculture teacher as well as our uh, captain in the uh, National Guard. Okay. So he treated us uh, pretty good. And uh, I remember some other uh, teachers as well, Mr. Hathcote and uh, Mr. Henderson. And some others that trying to teach us. <laughs> <laughs> How did your military experience help you being in tribal government? Well, it, I've been telling the, the younger generation that, you know, uh, most of the people are not college material or, uh, or you know, you go to uh, military and it's not what they say on the outside. It's what you go in there and find out. They teach you leadership and, you know, uh, how to, uh, you know, take care of yourself. And they teach you a lot in there. It's not just shooting a rifle and then they send you up there. They, I, told, I used to let them know that they got different fields that you can qualify. Mm -hmm. I still uh, let them know that, you know, uh, they need to uh, take a hard look at military one day because uh, our military strength is not really like it used to be. Because mm -hmm. the politicians are kind of uh, not spending that much money on uh, things that the military needs. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so it, it taught me uh, a leadership. Mm -hmm. um, were there were there many um, Indian soldiers in your unit in Germany? How many Native Americans in that? Say it again. In in Germany, uh -huh. were there many Indian? Soldiers uh, in your group? There was one that 
went to school with this matter of fact, he was in the same grade. Calvin Mind Squad, I think he's part of Waterman in Kansas. Mm -hmm. He was already there okay. when I got there. And uh, he went to school, radio operation, and two weeks passed and he showed up. <laughs> and we started talking about uh, Salako and everything and everybody uh, in our company said, how in the heck do y'all know each other? So we explained how it is. So you from Florida and he's in Kansas and you're in school in Oklahoma. And so well, you know, it's sometimes you have to go different places to get educated, you know. <laughs> so um, and then uh, another uh, African American uh, was there that was in my uh, state by like two hour drive, mm -hmm. and he was from there. So. But he stayed there for about six months, and oh. I didn't know uh, he re up for another three years. But this, about a year ago, uh, maybe two years ago, uh, I tracked him down, and uh, sure enough, he was there. Oh. So we, we communicate, we talk to each other every now and then. Yeah. yeah. Kept in touch. Yes. What's it like coming back to? Shalako, how many reunions have you made? How much? I try to make, you know, I don't know, maybe six or seven, but last year I didn't make it because uh, we had to be inaugurated in our position, so I mm -hmm. missed it last year. And another year, maybe four years ago, three years ago, uh, I didn't make it. Mm -hmm. But this year I, got, I had to make it, so. <laughs> Are you affiliated with any uh, veterans groups down there, or? Uh, we have uh, in Florida. We have uh, Seminole uh, veterans, mm -hmm. and we have a, a, a building that we uh, funded, and it's shaped like a star. And uh, I think that's the only uh, veteran building in, in the country that I know of. It's uh, that they, they build a star, each star, uh, but one one section that they gave us uh, veterans, the rest of them is uh, like meeting rooms. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. think you can find it on uh, www.seminoleveterans.com, I think you can look in. And so you've got your Veterans Museum there for, for yeah. Seminole Tribe. And mm -hmm. some, yeah, that's yes. neat. Um, why are the Shalako reunions important to you? Well, you more just like see who's still around, and uh, you never know that the year that you come to reunion, who's going to be here, who's not going to be here, you know. And uh, so it means a lot to me because uh, when you get, I guess going to Salako about two or three years or four years, you become a family. Mm -hmm. So you always wonder what happened to this person, you know, and when you come here, they tell you where they're at or where they, you know, they're here or not. Mm -hmm. And it, it's also, uh, it's good to exchange who's back home and <laughs> they make it and all that. Right, yeah. right. Um, It seems like mainstream society is trying to follow the Native community now in terms of honoring their veterans more. Um, do you think? Do you think that's succeeding? Well, um, Seminole Tribe kind of pushed uh, a statue, the third or the fourth statue, that when they have in the mall, mm -hmm. and we were pushing it, and then. Uh, they kind of uh, uh, supporting us, but from what I understand, they pass a bill that they cannot put another statue. And there's three uh, statues of soldiers, but would they put us, there's nothing wrong with it, they put us in the Hispanic part, but mm. it should be full. I see. Mm -hmm. Caucasian, Hispanic, and uh, 
African American and Native mm -hmm. American. Mm -hmm. But somebody forgot to put the fourth one. So that's what we've been pushing it. But then I understand that uh, I guess the uh, American Native American Museum uh, they're going to put a statue over there. They're going to let us put it over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we got to find a funded for it. So. Um, I think we're on the right trail. I don't know how long, <coughs> how long it'll take, but we're working on it. Right, right. Yeah. Um, what would you like people to know or remember about Shalako? Well, I would say that the people that has been here, that went to school or graduate from here, would understand what we talking about because this would this become home but the person that's never been into Salako would have a tough time to understand what we're talking about some some people think that it's a, like a reform school or something but maybe it was I don't know but I thought that this was just a regular school that you got to learn and then also learn how to take care of yourself as well and live on your own mm -hmm. so you can't be living in your parents' house. Some, some, sometimes you got to fly off the nest, <laughs> you know. So that, I think that's the uh, best way to put it, I would think, yes. <laughs> Is there anything else we should talk about that we haven't covered? Uh, for me, I learned a lot that there's more than five civilized tribes because back in Florida, there was only, I, I thought that there was only five civilized tribes. When I got here, man, there's more than five, <laughs> close to 500. So I got to make a lot of friends here. And uh, I'm very glad that I went to school here. You got a really intertribal education. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. it was, yeah. So. Oh, well. Thank you very much for talking with us today. Uh, thank you for interviewing me, and uh, I'm glad that I'm part of a you know interview that you know maybe one day that somebody in out there will understand what the the, the veterans stand for and what we will fight for. Mm -hmm. And a Native American or first American, you would say, mm -hmm. well, not not American, but first per people was in this country. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so happy to be interviewed.